Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are someone facing challenges with calculations in a molecular biology lab, you are in the right place. In this lecture series, we'll explore and understand various calculations to ease our lab life. As I've noticed many interns and desertees in my lab struggling with these calculations. So let's make it simpler for all of such students. So before that, get your notebooks and pens ready to dive into these calculations in proper and straightforward manner. So we are going to start with the very basics of any lab. That is the preparation of the stock and working solutions. So whenever you get into some lab, you'll definitely going to hear these terms very frequently. The stock solutions and the working solutions. Okay, now the newcomers like bachelor students or master students find it a bit complicated to understand these terms and further make these solutions. Okay, so no worries, we are going to make it very simpler over here. So stay tuned for that. Before getting into any calculation or something, we should understand these terms. So there is a solution which we call the stock solution. And from the stock solution, we generally prepare a working solution. Okay. So then the question arises that what is the stock solution and the working solution? So in very simple terms, the stock solution is the concentrated form of the solution, which may be either present in your lab because some stock solutions or the concentrated solutions are present commercially. So they may be available in your labs as such. But sometimes you need to prepare the solution, the concentrated form of the solution in advance of your experiments. Okay. So that at, during the time of experiments, you can prepare the dilution out of the stock solution, the concentrated solutions, and you can use these uh, dilutions or diluted solutions in your experiments okay so the dilutions which we are talking about here are your working solutions okay so very simply we can say that the stock solution are the concentrated solutions and working solutions are the diluted solutions which are prepared from these stock solution during the time of experiments why so that it will uh, lead to the uh, less laborious um, tasks or we can say it can save our times and also during the time of experiment it save us from doing such laborious works like weighing of certain substances and then making solutions okay so to save that time we can already uh, like we can prepare the stock solution in advance and we can directly use these solutions to prepare the working solutions during the time of experiments. Now, and as an example, I've taken here the 37% HCl that is commercially available and it's already present in your lab. So it's a kind of stock solution only, the concentrated form of the HCl. Okay. Now you have been asked to prepare a 5% solution of this HCl. So here you can say that this 37% HCl is your stock solution, right? This is your stock solution. And the 5% HCl that is that has been asked to prepare is your working solution, right? So this is how we can say the concentrated and the uh, diluted form as the stock solution and the working solution respectively. Now, an example here is we have a stock solution of n millimolar and we have been asked to prepare a working solution of 1 millimolar and that to 100 ml. So, we have to prepare a 1 millimolar solution, 100 ml, from a stock solution of 10 millimolar. It's very simple. You can use this formula that is C1V1 is equals to C2V2 where C represents the concentration of the stock solution that is 10 millimolar here, okay. V1 here will be your the volume of 
the stock solution that has to be taken to prepare this working solution of one millimolar concentration okay then we have c2 it is the concentration of the working solution that has to be prepared that is one millimolar here and finally v2 this is the final volume that has to be prepared of the working solution that is given here 100 ml so you need to remember this formula and you need to understand what these values signify here okay so we have c1 10 millimolar okay you need to uh, note down all the information that is given in the question so we have a stock solution that is c1 of 10 millimolar concentration v1 we don't know we need to calculate it because how much amount or how much volume we need to add from the stock solution to our working solution so as a working solution will get a concentration of one millimolar that we need to find out then we have c2 which is one millimolar and we have V2, which is 100 ml. So we simply have to find this V1. So C1 V1 is equals to C2 V2, where C1 is 10 millimolar, V1 we have to find out. C2 is 1 millimolar and V2 is 100 ml. So here's a simple calculation of multiplication and divide. And at last, we are going to get this 10 ml so for preparing this one millimolar concentration of the solution 100 ml of it what we have to do we have to add 10 ml from this stock solution and the remaining 90 percent will be your water in this case or you can take any diluent dms so it could be or could be any diluent okay so to prepare 100 ml of 1 millimolar concentration, working concentration from a 10 millimolar stock, you need to add 10 ml of this stock solution to the 90 ml of your diluent. Okay, and then you will get this concentration of 1 millimolar. So that is how you are going to prepare that. Next, you have a question here. How will you prepare 60 ml of 10 millimolar NaOH solution from the stock of 10 molars NaOH solution? So here is a simple formula for it. That is C1V1 is equals to C2V2. We can use this formula to calculate any of these concentration based questions. Okay. So here I am going to play a simple video which will explain you how you are going to prepare a working solution of this 100 millimolar from the stock solution of 10 molars okay so here in this question we have been asked to prepare an annual solution of 100 millimolar concentration to a final volume of 60 ml from a stock solution which has a concentration of 10 molars okay so now that we know the stock concentration that is C1, we also know the C2 that is the working concentration and also we know the V2 that is the volume of the working solution, the final volume that has to be prepared. Okay. What we don't know is how much volume that is V1, how much volume we should be adding from the stock solution to this working solution so that our final concentration will be 100 millimolars and also we have to prepare that in uh, to a final volume of 60 ml okay so to find that out we can use this formula that is c1 v1 is equals to c2 v2 where we know the uh, values of the C1, C2 and V2 and we have to find out this volume of the stock solution that has to be added. Okay. So 10 molars of stock, what volume should be added from the stock solution to the working solution 
so that our final concentration will become 100 millimolars and the volume should be 60 ml. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is either convert this molar into millimolars or this millimoles into molars. Okay, so the best thing we can do here is we can convert this moles into millimoles. So 10 moles or we can say one in one mole we have 100 or 1000 millimoles. Okay, so here we have converted this mole into millimoles. And we have to find out the volume that has to be added from this stock. We have this working concentration that is 100 millimolars and we have our final volume. Okay. Now we have to calculate the V1 that is 100 millimoles 60 ml and we are going to divide it with 1000 millimoles into 10. So we can cut this one out. This will be 0 0.6 ml or we can say 600 microliters. So we just have to add the 600 microliters to make up the final concentration of 100 millimolar. So we have to add the 600 microliter from the stock solution of NaOH and the remaining that is 59.4 ml will be your water. So this is how we are going to prepare a, uh, this working concentration of 100 millimolars of NaOH. Okay, 60 ml. This is how we are going to do it. So next we have some questions for you to solve them. In our next video, we are going to um, calculate all these questions. But before that, I want you all to practice them and find out where you are getting stuck. And you can ask me those questions in the comment box. Okay, so in the next lecture, we are going to like solve these questions. Along with that, we will get to know that how we can convert the percentage based uh, concentrations that are given and into this millimoles and then we can find out how much or how we can prepare the dilutions from those concentrated solutions like for example if we take H2O2 that is hydrogen peroxide commercially it is available as 3% or 5% or 30% so we don't actually know how much concentration these solutions have okay and we actually have been asked to prepare the solutions in the form of moles or millimoles or micromoles we use those kind of concentrations so we'll get to learn that how from the percentage we can convert them into millimoles or moles and then finally how we are going to perform, uh, how we are going to prepare the dilutions. So stay tuned till then.